Um, hello, my name is Matthew, and I finished reading Sentimental Education by Gustave Flaubert. Uh, the translation that I read was by Helen Constantine, and it's a fabulous novel, but it's a hard sell. It's uh, a book that has a deeply pessimistic worldview, and it's also very depressing and heartbreaking. It's also a difficult book to describe because it's doing so many things on so many scales. Um, it's a huge, sweeping, historical novel set in Paris during the French Revolution. Uh, it's also a comedy of manners. We meet a whole cast of characters which are despicable and unlikable. They are almost all liars, frauds, charlatans, insincere, unauthentic. It's hard to r relate or sympathize with any of them. They're almost doing nothing. Uh, we have people that are poets and painters and journalists and writers. Um, all of these professions that require passion and none of them have any passion they are opportunists they're materialistic um, petty and vain they change what their professions are going to be depending on what is going to give them the most advantage what's going to be the quickest gratification all, and all they nearly do nothing the poet isn't writing poetry, the journalist isn't writing journalism, the art dealer isn't selling fine art, things like that. And then the book is also a acute, insightful, psychological novel of our, our principal character, Frederick, who has one of the most unhealthy, uncomfortable love stories that you can uh, read, he becomes infatu infatuated with uh, a, an older married woman who's also a mother, and he's obsessed with her, believes that he loves her. They meet at the very beginning of the book, and he is so greasy, he worms his way into this family's life, the, the mother, the, 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 the wife and husband, and. Uh, child, he slips himself, wedges into their household and in, in their business, and gets into their good graces. Uh, they they, tr they trust him and b believe that he's well intentioned and that he's a good friend. And all the while, he has these ulterior motives. Um, he wants to sleep with this man's wife. And we don't even sympathize with um, the, the husband and at some points even the wife because th they are terrible people too. The husband is a philanderer. He's constantly having affairs. Uh, Frederick, um, even though he's infatuated with this woman, he's also off having his own affairs. Um, and so... As it goes along, you really don't even want any of the characters to be happy. You're hoping for tragedy. Now, with all of those things going on, what makes it, one of the things that makes it really impressive is things are not alternating. We're not having different storylines or switching perspectives. Instead, Flaubert manages to tell all of these stories at the same time. So there are storylines where the, the, the events have a storyline, um, the characters have a storyline, the ideas, the principles behind all of the things that are happening have a storyline. And it creates this sensory experience because 
it's so encyclopedically told. Everything that's happening, every sight, sound, smell, color, texture um, is described to us. And Flaubert is masterful at picking, deciding the correct details to give us. So it's, it's not long digressions describing the streets of Paris or uh, historical events or anything like that. Instead, it's interlaced in the description um, of the character's mental state, the character's behaviors, the, the, the story that's happening. It's all mixed in together and it creates this world that is beautiful and romantic and it becomes really sad when you realize that the world that Flaubert is describing is unseen, unnoticed by any of the characters. They're oblivious, they're totally oblivious of the world around them. I'll, I'll read, um, maybe not the best example, but um, a, a, a passage that I just thought was wonderful, and I, I hope that it will give it give you an example of being able to tell, being able to describe multiple levels of perspective at the same time. <clears throat> um, and this is Frederick um, being involved with a woman. He almost invariably arrived before she did, and he saw her come in, arms bare, fan in hand, pearls in her hair. She stopped on the threshold. The door lentil framed her like a picture, and she hesitated a fraction, closing her eyes to see if he were there. She took him back in her carriage. The rain beat down on the windows. Passers-by flitted, passed through the mud like ghosts, and sitting close together, they dimly noticed them with tranquil disdain. On various pretexts, he remained another good hour in her room. So it's richly described, and the, the surroundings help elevate um, the, the personal circumstances and mental states of the characters. The, the backdrop of this whole thing, of this love story and all of these despicable, unprincipled characters is the French Revolution. And there's a whole, a whole group of people that are for it, that are for um, overthrowing the government and having a republic set in. And they talk about um, the equality of people and bringing rights to the labor and the workers and, and the people. But you don't believe any of them. They're all liars and insincere and self-motivated. And aside from the tragedy of the love story, the, the aspect of the book that I find even more depressing is these characters talking about if they were in power things would be better and the underlying implication is that even with a change in hand a, a new government uh, people of the lower orders moving up and now having power that nothing would change they're the same people it's not a small group of people in power that are evil and the public, the, the majority of people are all actually really good. Instead, it's, they're all equally terrible. And if you put a new group of people in power, they're just as self-motivated and selfish and corrupt as anybody else. So it's pessimistic. There's a, a, a deep cynicism running through the whole book. Um, 
the the light moments, the the things that um, make it uh, make it readable and make it a masterpiece is the elements of irony, the humor in the book, um, the, the amazing achievement of being able to sympathize and feel bad for characters that y you would never believe that you would. The, the characters are so well realized. They act and think as real and as human a a a as can be attained with print on a page. So they're not all evil. They're not cartoonish villains. Instead, they have real motivations and uh, personal aspirations. They're just <sighs> unlikable. So this is all. All of this is hard for me to describe because it's such a big book. Um, oh, in there. Um, <clears throat> so I love Flaubert. I, I love this novel, but it's very difficult for me to easily recommend um, if you don't already like Flaubert. So that's it. Leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching.